Hey guys, MEP Guy here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to produce clean, simple, and dare I say, spectacular plumbing isometric drawings. Now I've already done a video on how to model this uh, core restroom or public restroom, and you can get that on my channel, but I wanted to show you guys how to uh, create a simple isometric drawing for you guys to put on your plumbing plans for your contract documents. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new default 3D view and what I would recommend is always delete the curly bracket 3D view you have and that way you can create a brand new one from scratch. So we're going to just delete this one right here and now when I go up to the house it's going to make a default 3D view. So we clicked on the house and now Revit displays a default 3D view of my entire building. So we have to um, make a section of this so we're only looking at this portion right here. So the way we do that, the easiest way I know, is to just draw a call out real quick. So I'm just going to draw a call out, so I'm going to click call out, and we'll just go ahead and draw our call out around the items we want to show in our isometric. So right here looks good. Okay, now we'll go back to our 3D view and we're going to use that call out to shape this view real quick. So I'm just going to, and you can see right here it created a um, new 1-plumbing-callout1 and that's the name of our new call out. So I'm going to right click on my view cube and I'm going to orient to a view. It's going to be a floor plan and you can see that call out is right here. So we're going to click on that and Revit's going to orient this to that view. So it's going to take some time but eventually it does um, trim that 3D view and it actually shows it from the top. So all we have to do now is click on this little corner right here and it's going to show an isometric. So here we have it. Now we have that view and it's been shaped perfectly. And the reason I like to use that is because basically it creates it from level 1 to level 2. So we know we got all the stuff in there and it just makes it a little easier than using a section box. Okay, but we do still have a section box that we can click on and um, change any of the direction if we need to go wider or, or whatever. So now we can just simply delete this call out because we don't need it in the project anymore. And that was just a quick way to shape our isometric. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do is shape your isometric drawings. So I'm just going to move this isometric over to this side just like that. And we'll go ahead and make the screen a little bigger. Now the first thing I like to do is kind of set my scale um, to make sure that I'm working in a um, size that's going to fit on my sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my sheets that I'm going to put all of my isometrics on. So I'm going to open up A101 and we're just going to pull that new 3D view into this sheet. And we can just put it anywhere for now. And as you can see it's very small relative to the sheet so what we can do is we can double click into this view right here and then I can change the scale down here. So let's go ahead and try half inch equals one foot. And that size looks more reasonable. I think that one's going to work a little better than that eighth of an inch. So now that we have the size correct, we can kind of move that into place. And that way we know that we're going to work in that scale. So we can actually go back to our drawing if we want. But I actually am going to work in the sheet because I'm going to do a couple things uh, to show you guys some stuff. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of plan out what I'm what I want to show and I want to make an isometric drawing that's going to show only the sanitary and vent lines and then I'm going to make one that only shows the water and the hot water lines. So the first thing I can do since I'm going to be duplicating all these views I can go ahead and save some time and just tag all the plumbing fixtures first. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to double click into this view and we're going to go to annotate and we're going to go to tag all and it says that I need to lock this view before I tag. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just go down here and we'll go to this little house lock button and we're just going to save the orientation and lock this view. We'll just name it ISO for now. And let's try that again. Let's go to annotate, tag all, and let's go down to plumbing fixtures, plumbing fixture tags, click that. And then we don't need this box, we're just going to use the standard. We don't need a leader and horizontal is fine. We'll click OK. And Revit went ahead and tagged these plumbing fixtures. Now you can't really see them right now, so what we would have to do is we're just going to click on one of the tags. We're going to right click. We're going to select all instances visible in the view. And then I'm just going to use my arrow keys to kind of nudge them so I can see them better. So I'm just going to nudge them to the left, go down, down, and maybe to the right. And that looks good for the water closets and the urinals. Now the labs, um, I haven't even tagged yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just going to click into them. 
and we'll just name this L-1. And now we've named all these, so we can go ahead and just select all of our lav tags right here. And we can kind of just move those into a place that looks nice, something like that. And we can use our arrow keys still to kind of position them. Now this looks okay, um, and I can probably get away with um, just doing everything in this view right here. But I do want to show you an extreme version where maybe you would want to split this up to show things a little more spaced out, okay? Because you're going to run into problems where maybe the view is um, overlapping and you're not going to be able to show things in a, in a nice, consistent, clean way. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the architectural background and we're going to move these plumbing fixtures even closer to the toilets. Now this is not a real life thing, but I just want to show you for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to do that real quick for you guys. So I went in the background file and I moved this fixtures way up. So I'm going to show you guys, um, I'm going to reload that background file by going to manage links. We're going to click on the arc background and we're going to reload it and we're going to click OK. And you saw that these labs jumped way closer. And I'm going to go ahead and move all my piping and so I can demonstrate that point. So in this situation, you can see that trying to tag all these things and make them look clean would be kind of a nightmare. And there are going to be times when you're going to have fixtures overlapping or a bunch of pipe overlapping. So there's going to be times where you want to clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So what I would recommend is we're going to duplicate this 3D view. So I'm going to go to my ISO. And we're going to right click on it and we're going to duplicate this view. And we're going to duplicate with detailing because we want these tags to come along with it. So I've duplicated this view and it says it's ISO copy 1. So now we can just go to ISO copy 1 and we're just going to make ISO copy 1 the lavatories. So I selected my section box in the 3D view and I can go to my floor plan now, click into it and I can just move that section box over to a point right here. And as you can see, that only shows my lavatories and my water heater now. So I'm going to do the same thing with ISO, the first one we created. So I'm going to select that section box right here. And we're going to do the opposite. We're going to click into this view. And we're just going to show the water closets and urinals for this one. So now I have both of those um, figured out. So let's go back to our sheet, A101. And we're going to zoom out a little bit. And so this is ISO, the first one we created. So let's actually bring in ISO copy one into this view as well. And we're just going to put it in an arbitrary spot. And we can use our arrow keys to kind of nudge it around and get it to a spot that is going to line up nicely. Maybe something like that. Now I like the way that looks. So let's just clean this up a little bit. And it might be a good idea to put these on view templates now. So let's click into this one. And I'm going to create a sanitary vent isometric view template. So I'm going to go to view. We're going to go to view templates and actually first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change um, some of the things. So I'm going to go to VB for visibility graphics and we're going to go to filters and I'm going to add some filters. Now for this I want to, um, I want to get rid of my uh, sanitary or my domestic uh, water. So I'm going to click OK and we're just going to get rid of this visibility here. And I'm also going to add in my sanitary invent just for use um, in my next one. So I'm going to click OK there. And now the only thing that's showing is my sanitary vent. And I also want to remove the levels for this. So we'll right click on this and we'll just hide it in view by the category. And we'll also remove our section box. So we'll right click and hide in view the category. Now I also have these walls here. And I also have the architect uh, fixtures that I don't really need to show for this simple um, isometric drawing. So I'm actually going to go back to visibility graphics. I'm going to go to Reddit links and we're just going to deselect architectural background and hit OK. And so now all of that stuff is gone. So this is much more simplified. OK, and now I can just make that a view template. So I'm going to create a view template from this current view right here. And it's going to ask me what I want. So I'm going to say this is the ISO sand vent. I'm going to hit OK. And we're just going to make sure we change this view template on our drawing to ISO sanitary vent. And now we're going to double click into this one that we created, which was the ISO copy. And we're just going to create, put it on that view template that we just created. And now it looks um, exactly like this one. So we'll double click out of that. And now we can kind of space this again. So I'm going to click on that view and I'm just going to use my arrow keys to kind of nudge this around into a spot that looks good. Maybe something just like that looks pretty good. Now we don't really need our water heater for our, this. So I'm going to click on this 
and I can I can't hide it because it's on a view template but I can go over here to my ISO sanitary vent and we can click on edit and we'll just go to mechanical equipment and we'll deselect that hit OK and now this looks pretty good so we need to make a distinct uh, make an annotation that represents this point to this point so we can maybe put a little bubble or something in a little letter right here so let's do that let's click into this view and we can just simply annotate and maybe make some text and there's many ways you can do this but I'm just gonna do a little um, a right here just like that and maybe we want it nice and big so I'm gonna actually go to a quarter inch something like that and we'll just nudge this up something like that and I'm just gonna copy this to the clipboard and we're gonna go right into this view right here so I'm gonna actually right click deactivate the view go into this view right here and we could just paste this guy right there and so now that we're denoting this location with this location so there's a lot of different ways you can do that and you can actually use annotations on the sheet itself but I just wanted to show you that you can move things even though we exaggerated this there is a way um, that we can duplicate these views and still make really clean isometric views by moving them now one thing I'm noticing is I actually don't have the sanitary that's underneath the floor so let's go ahead and fix that so we'll double click into one of our views so let's just do this one first now I can always use the light bulb to reveal things and so what I want to reveal is this section box so I'm gonna click on my section box now and we're just gonna drag that down so we start to see the sanitary below the floor maybe something like that and we'll just drag this one across because I don't want to see all of that right there and we'll just click out of that well, I accidentally deactivated the view, so I have to go back into it, click the light bulb, and now I can double click over here. And we'll do the same thing for this one. We'll double click into it, we'll hit the light bulb, and we'll click our section box, and we'll just move this down so we can see some of the piping under the floor. That looks pretty good, so we'll just double click out of this view now. Well, let's click our light bulb first, and now we'll double click out of the view. Now, I don't really need my floor plan anymore, so I'm just gonna remove that for this. And let's go ahead and clean this up some more. So the next thing I'm noticing is I don't really need my 3D fixtures for this view. It's a very simplified view, so I just want to show, um, you know, normal or maybe more uh, schematic type fixtures. Okay, so what I've actually done is created a special fixture. Now you'll see that when I click on the detail level, I'm not able to access these and that's because I put it on a view template so all I have to do is go to my view template and for detail level I just click this include button and that way um, I can access this detail level now and I can change this to course and when I change it to course you're gonna see that I've created some custom um, fixtures here to show up for my riser diagrams or my isometrics okay so these are much more simplified and they don't um, distract from the view so I kinda like them okay so we're gonna do the same thing for this one for our lavatory um, but let's go ahead and continue to clean this up a little bit so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna tag all your piping so all I do is I select all the pieces that I wanna tag and we have to be a little strategic with this so I'm just gonna select all the big pieces and we can just hit the control button and we can use dragging selections and we'll just select all these pieces right here and we'll select those two so that looks good for now maybe we'll select this one to just show you something so now that I have all my pieces selected I'm gonna go up to annotate tag all go down to pipe tags and click the box and then we're just going to select whatever pipe tag we want. Now I've already added all of these pipe tags in here and you can access these at mepguy.com. I'll make sure I have this, um, this whole project file available with all of these tags included for you guys, okay? So the first thing, uh, first tag I'm gonna use is it's just gonna call, be called uh, pipe tag right here. And I don't need a leader and I'm just gonna click okay. And the nice thing about using this method is it puts the tags right in the middle. So I'm gonna click OK, and now you can see all of my tags are perfectly centered within my pipe. So I really like the way it does that, okay? So one thing you'll see is that this tag right here is um, overlapping my fixture, and so that's something that I'm not gonna want. I'm gonna to wanna to use a leader tag for this type. So I'm gonna click on this, and I'm just gonna delete it, okay? So the next thing we wanna tag is we maybe wanna tag the inlets uh, or the sanitary connections to these water closets. So we can't really use one of these tags because it won't fit. So we're gonna have to use a leader tag. So all I have to do is, again, I'll just select all the pieces that I want to use, uh, 
use a leader tag on. So I'll select all these and maybe I'll use this one and this one and even this one. Okay, so I'll go back up to annotate. We'll go to tag all. And again, I'm gonna go down to pipe tags right here, click. And then this time I'm gonna use my pipe size tag with leader and it's gonna have a loop. Okay, and this time we're gonna select leader and we can set the length if we want, but we don't need to worry about that. We're just gonna click OK. And now it shows up with all of these leader tags. So here's a tip for you guys. I know I'm going to want this tag to be up here, and then the I'm gonna want the loop pointing down to the center of this point. So I wanna get these all to be consistent in the same size and look the same. So I'm gonna select all of them by holding Control, and I'm just gonna move them to about the right place that they need to be. So maybe something just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from attached end to free end. And what that will allow me to do is I can change this leader, okay? So I'm gonna click on this and we're just gonna go straight up and then we're just gonna go to the middle of that pipe right there. And what that will do is I'm gonna be able to do that for each tag right here. Go straight up, go to the middle of that pipe and now we're being pretty consistent with our tags, which makes things look a lot cleaner, okay? So now we have all of those tags pretty much exactly the same and they look really nice. So I'm gonna clean these up too. So I'm gonna click on this one, right click on this one, and I'm just gonna drag it again. Maybe we want this tag to be central right here and going up like that. So let's just go down here and we're not worried what this looks like yet. So that's about right. Maybe we want it to the left a little bit, something like that. Again, go to attached end, make it free end. And then we'll click on the tag and we'll go right to the right here. And then we'll just go to the middle point right here. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll go over just like that. And we'll go to that midpoint. And that looks pretty consistent. So let's go ahead and do this tag. Now you can also just drag these tags straight over. Oh, for this one, I couldn't do it but you can kind of mess with this um, as well and it'll kind of do that. So you don't have to necessarily use the free end, but as you can see, when it is using the um, attached end, things don't really work as nice as you'd like them, okay? So let's just change that to free end and then I have complete control over the length of this thing and maybe I wanna pull this in like that and we'll just do something like that. Now that looks pretty good. So I've pretty much tagged everything I'm going to need. Maybe I also want to tag this piece right here. So anytime you already have tags, it's really easy to click on a tag, right click it, and then we're gonna create similar, and we can just go ahead, um, undo this leader, and I can go ahead and just tag this right here, okay? And just finish that guy up. So that is kind of um, some of the methods that I use when I'm uh, doing my isometrics and tagging things. Now I want to show you another neat method that I figured out the other day when I was making this video. And basically, if I want this tag to be exactly the same for these two, there's another method I can use. So I'm going to actually show you guys. So I'm going to click these and I'm just going to delete them. And what you can do is if I try to copy this tag and go from this point to this point, it doesn't work, okay? Because Revit needs to find um, a place to put that tag, but there is a workaround. So all I have to do is select this and I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna create a duplicate of it. And I'm just gonna move it over to the side just like that. I'm gonna create one more, just holding the control button and we're gonna just gonna duplicate it right there. Okay, now I can click on the tag and I can actually just move it to the same spot as this tag right there. Move this one to the same spot too, right there. And now what I can do is I can move this tag from this point to this point. I can do the same thing for the tag that was overlapping here. I'm gonna move this tag from this point to this point, and there you go. Now the one thing you'll notice, guys, is these tags are not um, associated with these pieces right here. So we have to be careful, but there's something we can also do. So you'll see that when I change this piece of pipe right here, I'm gonna change it from four inch to three inch and watch what happens. 
So you notice that all of these tags updated because this piece changed. So we're gonna undo that. And this time I'm gonna show you guys when I select this piece right here, or this uh, tag, there's some options up here. And one says select host. So let's try that one first. I'm gonna click on select host. And you can see Revit selects the host of this tag. So you can see this tag is actually reading this piece of pipe right here. So all I have to do is select this and you can see there's a pick new host. So I'm gonna hit, hit pick new host and now I'm just gonna select this piece right here so it becomes its new host. I'm gonna do the same thing for this tag right here. I'm just gonna do pick new host. I'm gonna click this piece right here. And now you can see when I click this guy right here, I can do select host and this will now be highlighted, okay? So when I change this now to a three inch piece of pipe, only this tag updates and these do not, okay? So the cool thing about this technique is now I can make sure I get this exact tag and I can copy it anywhere and, and just move them. And then, you know, there's many ways to do things in Revit, but I did wanna show that little trick for you guys. Now let's just zoom out on this sheet right here. I'm just going to double click over here. And we also wanna create a water uh, isometric plan. So let's do that. So all we have to do now is we just have to duplicate these views again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, do that. So I'm gonna right click on this. We'll just duplicate this view and I'm gonna duplicate with detailing because I want the tags to come with it. All right, so we have this guy. And so all I have to do is create a new um, view template. So I'm gonna click on ISO, ISO sanitary vent. And we're gonna click on none because I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna to go to VV and go to filters. And this time I want to show the domestic water and I don't wanna show my sanitary and vent. So I'm gonna click OK. And you're gonna see that all the tags got removed from the sanitary event, which is totally fine. I'm gonna click on this little A and delete it. So now I have this so I can create a view template from this one. So I just go to view, view templates from current view, and we'll call this ISO water. Hit OK, hit OK. And now I have to make sure I change this to ISO water right here. And then let's just duplicate this ISO copy one. We're gonna duplicate the view with detailing. And that way I can have my little tags and my little A. We can just delete this A for now. And we're just gonna change this from ISO sanitary vent to ISO water, hit okay. And we can see all that stuff right there. Now, remember we need the water heater in this one. So let's hit the V or we'll go back to our view template. And this time we wanna show mechanical equipment. So let's go down to M, make sure we show a mechanical equipment, hit okay. And we'll go to our section box, so we'll hit the little light bulb, and we need to drag our section box out so we can see our water heater, and that looks pretty good, something like that. So then we'll hit our light bulb again, and that looks pretty good. So let's go back to our sheet. Let's click on these views right here. So I'm actually gonna click on both of them. We can use a dragging selection right here from left to right, and I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to kind of nudge this on the left side of my view just like that. Now I'm gonna add the water rise or isometrics over here. So I'm gonna do this copy one right here. And you can see that when you line up, Revit kind of snaps to the other views, just like that. So we got that one. Now we'll do this ISO copy two, we'll drag it in and it'll snap right here. And then we can use our arrow keys to kind of nudge these two together. Maybe something like that and we can select both of them with a dragging selection and kind of nudge them over as well. And then we can select all of them, deselect our sheet, and we'll just nudge them all together just like that. Now I'm gonna need to move this down right here and we'll get rid of those later. And so I guess I need to tag all of these, so I'm gonna click into my view right here. Now another thing you can do, instead of highlighting all the pieces, I could just go up to annotate, tag all, and we'll go down to pipe tags and we'll use our pipe tag, no leader, hit okay. And then what I can do is just delete all the tags that are not gonna work out. So I'm just gonna use my control to delete all those. And we'll keep that one and we'll just delete this one. And we'll make sure we filter only the tags and we'll just delete them, just like that. We'll probably need to move some of these. You might wanna move this one over 
and we might want to move this one down. So you'll notice that my water closet isn't actually connected to my water line and that's because of the way I created these graphics. They only really work for the sanitaries. Um, so I'd have to mess with that. Maybe I would draw a little flesh valve or something uh, just to make it look a little better. But what you guys can also do, um, it's totally up to you, is you just change the level of detail down here. So we'll go into our view template, ISO water, and we'll just um, make this level of detail. We can change this to fine here or just click this include. And then now we can change this to fine. And we can actually just show the plumbing fixture itself. It's totally up to you guys. These are the out-of-the-box fixtures, so maybe you could simplify these a little further to make things look clean. Um, but that's the fine level of detail. Um, you could also use the medium level of detail, and that will basically give you one line uh, pieces of pipe, but it will also give you the 3D fixtures. Okay, So you would want to do that. You could also do that for this one too. Um, so the last thing we would want to do is maybe get rid of these uh, view titles. So I'm just going to right click and deactivate this view. I'm going to click on this view right here. Actually, let's just click on all of them. And these are just my view titles. I can edit the type and I can remove them from this if I want. So if I don't want to show a view title, I just go here and I can also hit this show extension line, hit apply. And now you can see my view titles are gone and maybe we could just add text under here but we could also show one of the view uh, titles um, to name this thing okay so there's different ways you can do things um, these are just some of the things that are going to help you guys out i think the one uh, the one thing i mentioned where you separate this is very helpful now all of this is irrelevant if you guys don't even know how to model this stuff so for the next video i would recommend checking out how to model this in revit and i'll display that right here Thanks, guys. See you later.